<laughs> well, praise the Lord. I like what I heard right now in that worship song we did. This love makes no sense. <laughs> you know, this his love that his love that love that he has makes no sense. I know where I was, I know where I've been and makes no sense. But praise God that it praise God it don't make no sense. <laughs> Amen. Here I go. Well, praise the Lord. But I mean it in the right way, you know? Love of God. The love of God is too much. Praise the Lord. Well, we welcome you this mor this evening to our Ontario Bible study. And we have a visitor today. Hopefully a, hopefully a regular. Yeah, we're claiming it in Jesus' All name. All right, <laughs> in the family. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, hi, 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 hi visitor. Hi. Hi. Hallelujah. <laughs> our, belov our beloved <laughs> has arrived. <laughs> well, praise God. Um, I think I'm going to read an announcement today because it's really the end of the month. So I really think oh, we have an oh, outreach tomorrow at 5 p.m. And uh, prayer at 8 a.m. in the morning. Okay? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? <Already>. We're blessed. <laughs> okay. So praise God. I'm looking forward to uh, the rest of my life. Amen. And Sunday leaders meeting at 8.30 a.m. I think we finally have it together. Prayer at 8.45, service at 9.30. My husband was throwing me off all over that place. <laughs> <laughs> so praise That's the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so on the time of the service, you know. So Monday is already the first, right? Right, yes. Monday is already the first and... Eh, it, this year feels like it dragged through, but we're already there. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. it feel like it feel like it would never end, but we're already there yes. at the end of the year. Ready for the other one. Mm -hmm. So next month, next month will be a month of thankfulness, yes. a month of thanking God, yes. and that's I believe that's what we need to do next month not that we can do it now but through the month of november we ought to make it a point to thank him as much as we can <laughs> amen. 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 amen we need to thank him and thank him and thank him and what we're thankful for and what were yeah, yeah. absolutely amen. thank you for my life thank you for healing me thank you for delivering me thank you for and on and on it goes amen, amen. The anointing. Amen. I've always wanted, I've always, my life since I got saved has always gone after the anointing. I heard that word anointing when I first got saved and I I stayed so curious. I didn't know what it meant when I, that word anointing when I first got saved. And when I found out and I saw the move of God and I heard the word and everything that goes with it, the worship. Oh man, I want that. <laughs> I want the anointing of God in my yes. life. Yes. Amen. Forever and ever. Uh, X 20 verse 35 says, I have showed you all things. Oh, that's so true. He has shown us all things. Mm -hmm. But do, did, have we seen what he has shown us? How, how well, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you are to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So praise God, we will be blessed today by giving to the Lord. Amen. And uh, where it goes, it's not up to us. Our part is giving unto him, and he will return it as he wills. Amen? Amen. Amen. So 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this offerings today, Father, and we give you all the praise and glory and honor, Father, that it will come back to us, Father, as we, uh, like a, like when you throw a ball into the, a uh, 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 bottle in the ocean, it comes back. So, Father, I thank you, Father, for the hundredfold return upon every single person in this room, Father, in Jesus' name, and the ones that are not able to give, Father God, Father, even so, Father, they are here, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. While they're pass, while she's passing it, a sister Desiree is passing it around. Brother David, will you please pray for the offering? Yes. Father, we thank you for this evening. Father, thank we you. thank you, Father God, for, for your word, Lord. And Father, we just lift up the offering to you, Father. And we give you all the honor and the glory. And we just pray for tonight's word, Lord, that you will minister to us, Father, and we just pray for those who are out there, Lord, and that you will just bless their hearts, Father God, and we just thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. If anybody have prayer request? I know Josie, she's not here because her great-grandson, Devin, nine years old, mm -hmm. tested positive for COVID, and as I believe he's in the hospital. He's in the hospital, so, and I can see that little, little is feeling better. My little, little, yeah, yeah. so, praise report, um, God opened the door for her to see the GI specialist. Oh. Um, she went on Thursday, so there, there's progress. Praise God. Um, yeah. Amen. Amen. From not having an appointment to getting, yeah. getting her in. Praise the Lord. God, God did it. Yeah. Amen. And he's not done with her yet. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> and then uh, I have a prayer request for my sister-in-law for her, her stomach. Her stomach? For healing. For Divine, healing. Healing. Divine what healing. What is your name? Anna. Anna. I call her sister. Sister? Sister. Sister. <laughs> Easter. 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 Sister. Sister? Sister. Sister? Yeah. Oh, S-I-S-T-A-R, but extended? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, that's <good. laughs> Divine love the love. healing yeah. from the stomach. Mm -hmm. Stomach issues. I I'll just put well, stomach. I just got surgery. Oh, you just had yeah, surgery? Yeah, on the 21st. Okay. Oh. Look at them. Praise oh. the Lord in your hair. Wow. Thank you. Praise Jesus. God. Yeah. I have a prayer request. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat and Matt, Mike's daughter, mm -hmm. Tatiana, uh, she needs the uh, not only divine healing, but we're not going to believe any negative reports, and that every organ and every tissue in her body begin to flow normal. Yes. And also, um, just the living water of God to flow for her organs. Yeah. Like everything functioned normal. Yeah, amen. Okay, uh, we're believing. Amen. They're still in uh, Vegas. They're down, uh, he's teaching Bible studies. Or oh, his home, their yeah. home. Yeah. For a couple of days. <coughs> Amen. Praise God. God, God, God uh, makes us parents for a reason. Yes. <laughs> we need him. They need us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prayer, uh, prayer, uh, not, not our, uh, praise report. Mm -hmm. Our family got healed from the COVID. Both oh, yeah. Mother and, yeah. mother and son. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's, oh, he's right. tearing the place up. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah. Praise he's, the uh, Lord. He's, <laughs> he's 10. 10 years Yeah. And I and should give a praise report. Um, two people came back positive when I told you, and then people are getting sick in my office with the flu. But my antibodies, my daughter had me checked, and they were 115, and I only needed 15. So oh. again, someone came back positive on Monday, and they, I went and got my blood checked on Wednesday, and no, no COVID. Praise, so Praise thank God. You, Jesus, you mentioned Amen. that name COVID, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't want to get it again. <laughs> nope. Oh, no, Lord, yeah, the blood of Jesus. That's oh, right. Oh, yes. 
there. Yes, no more, no just, more. Just just leave the blood. That, just put the yeah. just put the blood of Jesus. <laughs> put the blood of Jesus on the doorpost yeah. of your heart, yeah. so no it, it'll just yeah. pass by. Yeah. So <laughs> it'll pass Lord. by. Yeah. Thank you, Amen. So is that it for our children and, and grandchildren, mm -hmm. families? I put families. Praise the Lord. No prayer request? Prayer request for me because I believe God, God blessed me with 50 years old. Um, oh. Birthday was yesterday and I just, um, I'm thankful for him to give me another chance and another life and a better situation and nothing is going on with me. But I only said that the diabetic was on the level and I lost more weight. So oh. praise the Lord, everything was like I'm thankful for him. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I'm, I've gotten my taste buds back. Okay. Yes. I just want to be eating. Well, that's a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the way the scale looks. But I told, <laughs> I told my husband, you know what? That's okay because it shows that I'm, my health is, really is restored. Yes. You know, my health has come back to come back to life <laughs> praise the Lord I was happy when I thought about that hey the scales moving another <laughs> back where it came from <laughs> <I rebuke you. laughs> yeah so then I realized the taste of taste buds are back praise the Lord praise God Joe come and pray for the for the prayer request and then you stay up here <laughs> if you can read my if I can read your writing yeah. hallelujah go ahead you away <laughs> good dance <laughs> Jesus oh, that's, pretty, that's pretty small honey yeah yeah it's pretty small I can't read that did you give that already? no yeah no it's too small for Hey, it's too small for me to read. Oh. You're writing, yeah. Okay, so what do you want me to do? You want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this for this prayer request, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father, we, we lift up to you right now, Father. You are a God of miracles, Father God. You are a God of healing, Father. You are a God of deliverance, Father. So right now, we lift up Josie and her grandson, uh, Devin, Father God. He's nine years old, and he's in the hospital for COVID. Father, we know and we realize that COVID is our name, Father God. So right now, we lift up Devin, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for a divine healing, Father God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Father God, every area in within his body, in and out of his little body, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, we, we believe in, we're believing for a praise report, Father, for, for David, Father, soon and very soon, Father. And Father, we lift up Anna, Father, for healing, divine healing on her stomach, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. She had surgery, so Father God, that she will recover speedily, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We know no side effects, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up to in the name of Jesus, and we speak life into Tatiana right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak life to her lungs, Father. In the name of Jesus, every area of her body, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, breathe life into her lungs, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, and we praise you for it, Father, for the healing, divine healing, Father, a miracle, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. <coughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for for the for Maggie, Father. She's happy, Father. She knows that you brought her, Father, through this fifty years. So Father God, 
that she was 50 years yesterday, and she appreciates the fact, Father, that, that she made it to 50. No matter what she went through, Father God, she's here today celebrating 50 years with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you for the healing, Father God, the, the good reports, Father, that are coming forth, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. And the good reports are all to give you praise or to glorify your name, Father. And, Father, we lift up all the family members of our group, Father, in the name of Jesus, from our oldest to the youngest child, Father God, and our extended families, Father, that they will see, Father, that they are in need of a Savior, those that, that are not saved. Father, that they will call upon you in the name of Jesus, Father, and for our children, Father God, for healing and recovery and, and salvation, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. God is on the move. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. This 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 uh this thing is shrinking too, huh? This pulpit is shrinking. Oh, I thought it was getting taller and I guess not. <laughs> I'm growing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, bless God tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, it's a little bit different tonight. Amen. Uh, our Bible study, you know, usually we uh, break into the Word and we tear it apart. And we decide, uh, you know, just get into the into the, the Word uh, more deeper. But today, it's going to be different. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what's going to be happening in, uh, in this coming Sunday. Amen. Uh, Sunday night. Amen. People are going to be out going out to Halloween. Amen. People are going to be out there uh, doing things that uh, that I don't believe is good, but uh, that's my opinion. Amen. But let's let's, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter chapter six. We'll start off with that. In Second Corinthians chapter six. <coughs> In verse 17, the Word of God says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and to your sons, and to your daughters, says the Almighty Lord. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this uh, Bible study, Father God. We know, Father God, that we're not uh, going in deep into the Word, Father God, but we're going to bring out things, Father God, that uh, we believe, Father God, we're, as Christians, we should know, Father God, and understand, Father God, what, what's going on today, Father God, and what's been going on for a long time. We thank you, Father, give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I want to talk about Halloween, you know. You know, I want to talk about Halloween because it, it's, a, it's a, a, a day that... Uh, that a uh, uh, lot of things go wrong. Not that they don't, but it seems like it, it multiplies on this on that day. And I'm going to share a little bit. You know, as, as a young as a young boy, when we used to go out uh, trick or treating, uh, we walk about a mile. You know, we lived in uh, in Bassett, which is now Baldwin Park. We lived on Amar, Amar Road on Torch Street, which is now Amar Road. But between Violin and, and Puente Avenue, that's where we lived. But we would walk two blocks towards Puente Avenue, and then we would walk one mile up, turn around, and one mile back. We almost hit Francisquito. But, but we would walk, you know, and we weren't afraid. There was nothing to be afraid of, you know. There was, no, there was nothing uh, to, that was going to harm us at, at that time. And... Uh, and and we uh we uh what we wore the, the what, what we got you know we would take our little bags out there you know, where they would give us the the treat you know and they would give us oranges they would give us uh, popcorn balls you know like that you know and they would give us pomegranates cookies and uh and just a lot of big goods you know so it was it was nice clean stuff you know 
You know, we would go out there. We weren't afraid of, a, of what might happen to us out there in the dark and everything. There was no fear. Even sometimes, even today, kids don't have no fear. But at that time, there was nothing like somebody's going to be, be uh, messing you up or whatever, you know. And so, and what we wore, was our costumes were, you know, we, we were dressed as cowboys, you know. You know, as sailors, you know, and, and uh, 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 farmers, stuff like that. That was our, that was our, our outfit for, for, uh, for, uh, for Halloween. There was no goblin thing. There was no, no thing like a spooky thing. Like it was just a clean fun at the time. That's when we thought it was. But now Halloween, now you know, it, it's changed a lot. Halloween now is, is more associated with, uh, with, with wearing elaborate things, you know, the costumes, you know, you go pay, pay a lot of money for costumes, you buy more candy, there's uh, haunted houses and everything. So everything throughout the year, it's changed from, uh, from something that was, might have been good in a sense, but it turned out to be worse and worse and worse every year. Halloween is, is, a, uh, is an old-fashioned way of saying that well, in those days, when they first started the Halloween in the, back in hundreds of years ago, it was they, they were celebrating All Saints Day, and that was in. But they were they were celebrating All Saints Day. But then throughout the years and up to now, they they turned it into what they say Halloween, the night before All Saints Day, and, and but it was a religious at that time. It was a religious holiday. You know, they were talking about how religious it was. But throughout the years, it, it, it's just changed into into something that uh, that uh, that that is it's hor it's horrible, it's awful, and it's and it's ugly. But yet, people go out because they love ugliness. You know, it, it's strange that uh, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad it seems, no matter how much they uh, they uh, warn the people, people still enjoy going out there. You know, they they enjoy it and. And it, uh, it, it's something that, that, something that, uh, that we need, as we as Christians need to learn, you know, to stay away from it. The Bible says that, come out from among them, separate yourself, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So God is saying, saying something to us as born again believers, you know. I know all of us here, you know, all our children are grown up, I think, you know. So we can't say anything about it, but our grandchildren, we you know we can't say too much, but we can at least pray for them, or or or, or, or uh, how would I say, it? or just share with them the, the the meaning of Halloween and and what it, what what uh, how bad it is, you know, and what in the the dangers of it, because it mainly it's a spiritual thing, you know, and we have to come against that 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 ugliness. I read the other day that uh, October the thirty first. Is one of the most dangerous days of the year, o October thirty first. It's one of the most dangerous spiritually and in the natural. It, it's a it's a double it's a double danger in that spiritually because people are out there, little kids are out there, you know, acting like demons and wearing like, like demon clothes and all that. And we don't know what, what, what comes in. We don't know what, what's in the air and the demonic forces that are, that's in the air that, that, that will come into a little kid or somebody that doesn't understand and yet, and yet it, 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 it infects them. It comes into them. You know, it's, like, it's like that plague that, that, that's all over right now. And, and, and it begins, and people, that, little kids don't, don't, don't understand that, that, that those are demonic things that are out there in the air. In the natural, you know, so, you know, people can get hurt and naturally and stuff like that. And, but it's, I was just thinking about it today, you know, it says, uh, Halloween always falls on October the 31st. Always. They don't move it around like presents and days, something like that. It's always on, on the 31st. Christmas is always on the 25th. You know, so it's a, not a coincidence. To see Christmas and Halloween, where Jesus was born, and the devil's birthday was in Halloween. You know, it's, it's always the same day. Why does it change? I don't know. But I was thinking about that, you know, how powerful, how powerful that day is that they won't change the date. It's always the same. No matter if it lands on a Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's still on the 31st. And it's the most dangerous. 
day of the year for, for our children. They become there's, there's fatality, fatalities and there and there pedestrians out there that are, where, where they're out there running in the streets sometimes. And there's cars going back and forth nowadays. You know, just people like, like our street here, man, they do 90 miles an hour here, you know, on a, on a 30 and a 40 mile zone. But when the kids are out there, there's no respect for them. People don't care. The driver doesn't care. And kids can get run over. Kids can get hurt. They, 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 they can be killed, you know. And, and, and yet, 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 and you know, it's up to anybody else if they want to send their kids out. That, that's up to them. But yet, knowing the, the, the danger of it, they still send them out in the dark like that. It's a dangerous day for them. It's dangerous for our homes and our cars. Homes, because they get broken into, you know, I don't know when they started this, but, but trick or treating was, was good. But then they get to the idea where the place where uh, if you didn't give anybody anything, they come back and, and mess your house up. You know, I remember those days that when I was a teenager, they would, we, we, they would do that. I wouldn't do it, but they would do that, you know. And, and, and they would go back and they mess the house up. One way or another, they would, they, they would do something to the house. And that was dangerous. And that's what we, we do. What we do, we've been doing the last few years, we just turn the lights off completely, leave it dark, you know, and nobody comes around, praise God, but, uh, but it's, a, it, it's a place, a day, where things are dangerous, the cars, you know, your, your cars get stolen, more than what it does any other day of the week, or any, any. so the theft and, and vandalism all the time, it seems like people begin to uh, get caught up in that, in that, in that, on the Halloween festivity, whatever, whatever demonic forces hit them, and they, they get caught up, and then they, and they get more, and more, they get more, uh, uh, how do how to say, they get more um, aggressive, more, more to do and destroy things, to do to to to, to uh, destroy people, and then there's uh, your health. It's bad for your health. When we used to go out, we had cotton balls, you know, candies and stuff like that, you know, you know, oranges. But now, in the last few years, they're lacing them with, with some kind of drugs. You don't know what they're going to get anymore. The other day, I, the, I heard the other day on, on TV, and on TV the other day, that uh, he says, he says, watch your candy now, because they might inject it with with some kind of COVID medication, you know, that, that'll go all over, you know. So we gotta watch those things. You know? We don't know what we're getting. In. We don't know what we're allowing our kids to get into. Halloween draws that Celtic uh, and uh, uh, a Christian tradition. That's what it started out in the Christian in Scottish and Scotland, a place like that. But it turned it into into something awful. It's always it's always a uh, it's always uh, <clears throat> had a, a morbid and spooky and <clears throat> ugly things, you know. I know that you see people sometimes now, they, they put stuff on their face that they look, they look like they're really scarred up and everything with blood. But that, that, that's, all that, that's all that is. That's just a devil. But you think about, think about it, that no matter how bad that pandemic is and how long it's been like that, this pandemic that we're in, it's been predicted that in America, in America, eight million dollars are going to be spent for Halloween, just for this one day alone. No, eight billion dollars is going to be spent for just for this day alone. So many people are broke, many people aren't working, but yet they're able to go out and buy these things. Halloween. Well, go with me into the in, in Third John, the book of Third John. Way back before Revelations. In Third John chapter eleven. I mean sorry, third John verse eleven. In verse eleven it says, Behold, follow not that which is evil, 
but that which is good. He that does good is of God, but he that does evil is not of God. When we began to participate in a lot of these things for Halloween, you know, we, 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 we gotta be we gotta be careful. There's some scriptures that I want to give you today, you know, uh, that that goes along what the Bible says about Halloween. You don't see the word Halloween in the Bible, but you hear the word evil. You hear the word, the word the demonic. So if you were going with me to Isaiah, and these are scriptures that I that I looked up and uh, had to do with uh, anyway about about. But what's happening today during the Halloween season? No, Isaiah chapter five. Chapter five. In verse twenty, says, "Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil; that put darkness for light, and light for darkness; that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter." You know, woe unto them that are out there. You know. Oh, it's nice out there. It's light. It's dark. It's a dark world. N not in the natural, but spiritually, it's dark. And why are they, Christians are going out there and 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 and, and participating in that darkness? The Bible says that there's, that there's, that there's a that they harden the heart. The rebels who have who have not come come to a, to consciousness. Born again believers that are out there doing these things have not come to consciousness when they're allowing their kids and, and they're doing it all for the fun of it. Oh, we can't, we can't let them, you know, we, we can't let them go without Halloween. they, they got to have it. Poor kids. No, no. we got to change our way of thinking. John chapter, chapter 3, the book of John, or the Gospel of John, chapter 3, I know this is not the type of <laughs> of, a, of a message to minister to you, but, <laughs> but it, it's something that it might help us, you know. John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is that condemnation that light is cut into the world, and men love darkness rather than rather than rather than light, because their, their deeds are were evil. For everyone that, that, that does evil hateth the light. Neither uh, neither cometh to the light, least his deeds should be reproved. In other words, in other words, that one that that operate in the light, they, they don't want to come to the light because their evil will be exposed. You know, at darkness, everything everything is, is covered. But when the light comes on, then then uh, it's, it's exposed. And many people rather stay in the darkness because they don't want to be exposed to what of what they're doing wrong. In Romans chapter thirteen, in Romans chapter thirteen, verse twelve, look what he says: "The night is far spent; the day is is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on." The armor of light. You know, no, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we know, the Bible is telling us to cast off those things of darkness. That's evil. Halloween is an evil night. It's an evil thing. So the Bible says, let's, let's get away from that and bring on the armor of light. In First Corinthians chapter ten. Chapter 10, verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So you can do those two things. You cannot drink and eat in the devil's table, or you can't eat or drink in the Lord's table. Either one, either one or the other. Remember, Pastor Raymond was talking about being hot and being cold. You know, so how can we partake 
in the things of, uh, of demonic forces. And then come and go. Okay, let's say, go to church Sunday morning. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We, we pray, we got delivered and everything. And then we come at night. That Sunday night is Halloween night. And we just partake in the things of the devil. Can't do that. It, it, it. I'm not. I'm not trying to rebuke you guys. I'm not. Wanna, I don't want to do that. I just want to bring to light what the Bible says. You know, you know, is what the Word of God says. Halloween is Amen. Playground. Amen. It's evil and it's very demonic, and there's a lot of sacrifices that are being made. Yeah. Says yeah. And we stand for righteousness. Yeah. Go preach it. Yeah. And, 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 so, yeah. honey. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we talked to one witch one time or that when it came to our church to visit us. She, she was a converted Christian, you know. Yeah, a long time ago, but yeah. 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 And, and that's why people don't know what's in the air, you know. They see the you know, down below, they see everybody doing their own thing, having fun and everything. But they don't know that what's in the air, the demonic forces that Bible talks about to pull down those strongholds. You know, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers and rulers and darkness of the world, uh, the unseen world. It says in, uh, <coughs> in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27 it says neither give place to the devil don't give place to don't, don't even give the devil an inch don't even think about it because once you think about it he, he, he begins to play with your mind And right there, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What he's saying is, be not you know, involved with unfaithful fruits of darkness, but rather, but rather reprove them. In other words, in other words what he's saying is, 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 uh, is uh, expose the secrets. Expose the secrets of the devil. When we have, you know, our grandchildren or our, or our children, maybe they have children that we, we got to tell our children, you know what happened? You let your kids go out like that, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. We got to at least tell them, you know, even if they get mad. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't talk to you for three weeks, it's okay, praise God. No, but they'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> they'll come back, you know. You know, they, they, you know family always gets mad, but hey, mom, my daddy, can we do this? Can we, yeah, yeah. But we gotta say something. We cannot stay timid. We cannot. We cannot zip our mouth. We cannot be quiet anymore. We cannot be quiet anymore. We we got to be able to begin to expose the darkness. Three more scriptures, and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the whole Revelation after that. No, don't believe it. <laughs> First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse twenty-two. Twenty-two. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You know that to to be sober. Don't be intoxicated. We're not talking about drinks, but with the with the appearance of evil, you know, with that that, that people that are out there doing the satanic things. Like I was watching a, uh, a news the day about Charles Manson, how he how he did dead already, but but how he, how he was able to to get these people together through the word and mixing it all up and taking them out to murder people, cut them open, take the blood out, take the babies out. Drink the blood, because they were they were they were drunk in that evil that he was teaching them. They were all drunk in it. 
So that evil is out there, but it tells us to abstain from. Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not, not going to go listen to the thing like that. But but there's other things that, that we got to keep away from. In Titus. In Titus. Hmm, chapter one. Verse fifteen and sixteen. It says, "Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are that are that are defiled." And unbelieving is nothing pure, but even but even their mind and conscience is is defiled. They profess that they are that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable and and disobedient, and unto every word, every good work, reprobate. In other words, he's saying to reprobate. It means to mean to uh, to a. Uh, uh, we 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 they we may cannot do things bad. We we cannot allow to do things bad. We gotta go out there. And we gotta go out there and expose them. Repro expose what what's going on out there. It's we as born again believers, washed by the blood of the Lord, you know, sanctified, set aside for the Master's use. It's up to us to go out there and and, and begin to uh, and to begin to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. To get more people to come to the Lord, so they won't be lost in that, in that darkness. Two more scriptures, James chapter. I lined them all up, so it won't be we won't be going back and forth. James James uh, chapter four, verse seven. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. To submit, it means to uh, to humble ourselves before the Lord. Submit means to humble ourselves before the Lord. He said, and he will, and he will flee. He, the devil, will flee from you. Once we submit to the Lord and humble ourselves, glory, the devil cannot stand being around us. He cannot stand being in your house. He cannot stand being around your kids. He cannot stand messing with your with, 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 with your marriage. He cannot stand messing with your finances. He cannot stand messing with your life. Because when you submit yourself to the Lord, completely submit, and humble yourself before the Lord, glory to God, the devil cannot hang around your house. It's like putting the blood on the post of your door like it did in the, in the, old, in the old Testament. He just has to go by because he, he just got, he goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, but he can't come around your house because you're the post of our house, the heart also. You know, our heart gotta be our heart's gotta be gotta be uh, uh, protected. The last one, say yay! Is the last one. <laughs> the last one is the last one for this minute is First Peter chapter five. Everybody knows this one. Verse 8. Oops, I, 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 I passed it up. I'm in, first, I'm in first John. Okay. Chapter 5 and verse 8. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your... Uh, accomplished... And your, and your brethren that are in the world. The same devil that's attacking our people. You know. So we have to resist. We have to resist the devil for our family. For those that aren't born again. Those that don't know the Lord. We have to resist the enemy for our family. So that way, that, that way, that way, uh, we, we, I always pray, Lord, Lord, uh, Open up the hearts of my, of my family, you know. Open up the hearts, Father God. Let, 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 them, let them see what's going on, you know. Prepare them, you know. But we can't do it until we resist the devil and put him back where he belongs and tell him, no more, devil. You have no more control over our families, over our finances, over our marriage, over our marriages, over, over no matter what, every area of your life, no matter what. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. But we got to walk in that, in that spirit that we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah.
Glory to God. Good timing. Didn't take too long, huh? Praise the Lord. But I'm going to say this, you know, some of you are out there, some of you are out there listening on, on, on a live stream, and you're saying, oh, this guy's crazy because he's talking about all the way. We, we don't, we, we still want to go out to, go ahead, go out. Go out. But if something happens tonight, which I pray to God that it won't happen, if something was to happen to you tonight, and you would, be, and you would die tonight, where would you wake up tomorrow morning? You know, that's a question you need to answer to yourself. But if you want to know if you're going to heaven, then say this prayer with me. It's confessing Jesus Christ into your life, you know, and, and asking him to come in. But you confess it with your mouth when you believe in your heart. And God will come in and, and change your life. You might look the same. You might smell the same. You might be all dirty and everything. But your life, your inner man will be changed. And you'll know that you are a new creation in Christ because the Spirit of God came into your life and He, and he re renewed your spirit. Glory to God. Say this, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I'm a sinner. I know, Father God, that I, I heard this message today. I don't know too much about it. But Father God, if anything was to happen to me tonight, I want to go to heaven. And so I'm asking Jesus to come into my life Father God, that I can have eternal life with you in heaven. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen.